the screen? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Right. So now you see the presentation only, right? The slides. Sorry, I. I, I yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I can yeah, see. Okay. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, better to double check sometimes. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, this is um, end of the or almost end of the uh, planner session day. So you're probably really exhausted by nice and um, impressive presentations. And I will try to keep this as fresh as possible. The idea of uh, this talk is to introduce um, our implementation of the six tish stack um, and its application for avionic wireless sensing networks in Omnet++. Uh, we are um, the Institute of Communication Networks from uh, Hamburg uh, University of Technology. And my name is Yevgeny Shudrenko. I'm the presenter. So the agenda is pretty simple. We start off with a short introduction um, about the, uh, the topic where this um, protocol stack that I mentioned can be applied. Um, followed by um, a bit of uh, background on the challenge we had to solve with this protocol stack, and uh, then um, the important part, uh, implementation details, um, a bit more in-depth uh, look at the different imp implemented uh, parts um, and layers, because this is a protocol stack. Uh, and finally, some uh, hopefully entertaining demos uh, related to the uh, to the next layer, uh, mostly, um, and some closing words uh, as, and uh, future work uh, as an outlook. So starting off with the introduction, uh, the uh, area is um, the wireless sensor networks, and um, they are being deployed uh, more and more in different uh, areas, such as home, uh, such as um, smart home, industrial automation, uh, different uh, medical monitoring uh, or agricultural mo monitoring uh, use cases. Um, and uh, all of this, all of it, um, all of the collected data uh, is being uh, forwarded to some gateways to the internet and uh, finally it's available uh, to us or to the end users. Um, however, there are a number of challenges involved with uh, deploying uh, VSNs. In particular, we need uh, often a high enough reliability, for example, for this um, automation scenario or a scalability if we want to cover really uh, huge areas uh, with uh, some uh, sensor nodes. Also, interoperability is a concern because there are already a lot of uh, existing uh, technologies and, uh, for example, TCP IP stack, which is deployed uh, everywhere. So um, it's nice that um, if new solutions would be backwards compatible with that. And also the energy efficiency is often um, a challenge because uh, the modes or the nodes are deployed in remote areas and uh, frequent maintenance is pretty costly. In order to solve these challenges, a uh, standard has been developed, uh, namely this 802.15.4, which defines uh, the lower layers uh, architecture, that is the, the data link and physical layers, uh, to operate these wireless sensor networks. And in this uh, presentation, we will be looking uh, or taking a, a deeper look um, at the uh, so-called TISH uh, MAC protocol, which is a part of this 15.4 standard. And one of the protocol stacks uh, which was developed on top of the 15.4 standard called uh, Sixtish. Uh, there are, of course, also a lot of uh, other protocol stacks, uh, also prominent commercial ones like Zigbee uh, that are using 15.4. So I'm pretty sure um, most of you have um, one way or the other some kind of uh, smart uh, sensors or lights at home. Um, for example, IKEA ones which use uh, Zigbee uh, under the hood. Um, so. The TISH is um, abbreviation for time-slotted channel popping, meaning that uh, communication does not happen sporadically. So if we want to set something, send something, we just send. No, uh, the time is slotted into these um, well, yeah, time slots. Um, and together with a particular frequency, they define so-called cell, uh, meaning that communication between pair of nodes occur in these cells. and. Um, the hopping part means that uh, in every cell, which repeats over time periodically, uh, we do not use the same frequency, but rather hop uh, over frequencies using some predefined hopping sequence. This allows us to avoid uh, some internal and external interference, 
because if you imagine uh, there is, for example, like a Wi-Fi network deployed nearby, which uses a particular Wi-Fi channel, then by changing the frequency of our own transmission on every uh, cell, we can avoid the, that interference. Now, um, the parts which are implemented, um, the, the parts of the six dish tag which are implemented um, by us in, uh, and that I want to like showcase in this presentation are uh, the, highlight, the highlighted ones here. So the whole stack uh, looks as follows, and um, you can see it um, uh, connects uh, to some existing um, protocols. For example, it borrows the, the transport and network um, layers from existing stacks and defines its own uh, routing layer, which is RPL, and uh, some extra link layer controls in the form of scheduling function and uh, six-stop protocol. And the idea of scheduling function is clearly to, to manage uh, these cells, which I showed on the previous slide. So install them, delete, um, and so on. The uh, RPL, um, this routing protocol for low power and lossy networks, is nothing more um, as a uh, this tree-like, well, it builds this tree-like uh, structure uh, for a uh, almost random uh, or any deployment of uh, sensor nodes in order to collect uh, data in a multi-hop fashion uh, from every node uh, at this uh, sync. Uh, it also supports downlink communication and each node is assigned uh, a specific uh, value called rank, which denotes some abstract distance from this node uh, to the sync. The uh, this tree structure is usually called uh, door deck, which is um, which stands stands for destination oriented uh, directed acyclic draft. So in short, just door deck. It's easy to uh, remember. And uh, there is one more complication or um, rather rather uh, complexity that can be added on top of uh, already existing uh, scheduling capabilities in Sixtish, namely uh, the scheduling function. Uh, the standard, uh, or rather the, the protocol specification of Sixtish, does not define a default scheduling function, but there is one which is um, now really close to being called a standardized, and that is a minimal scheduling function, which um, adds some features with respect to uh, traffic adaptation, interference avoidance, and um, also has a number of um, distinct cell types that are scheduled um, in the slot frame. Um, those being a dedicated, shared, and minimal cell. So the idea is pretty straightforward. Dedicated cell is reserved for unicast communication from a node to its uh, routing parent. Routing parent. Uh, the shared cell um, is for many-to-one -one communication and uses some back-off uh, mechanism to resolve uh, collisions. Whereas a minimal cell uses the or is used to broadcast control traffic and build uh, the topology, as you will see. Uh, in the demo uh, section. Um, the background or rather the, the motivation behind developing uh, or implement rather sorry implementing the, the six dish uh, stack in Omnet was uh, or is tied to uh, a use case in uh, avionics. Um, so there is a in standardization uh, thing called wireless avionic intercommunications which aims to replace some of the wired uh, connections on the airplane with the wireless counterparts to save some costs, uh, maintenance time, and also improve uh, the, the redundancy. As you can imagine, there are different types of sensors that can be placed in an aircraft, uh, namely uh, non-critical ones, for example, some communications, um, internal or um, quality of life um, sensors like uh, air quality, for example, or humidity, um, whatever. But there is also the possibility of deploying some safety critical uh, modes to monitor engine sensors or uh, smoke alarms or similar things, which uh, naturally impose high quality of service uh, requirements. And uh, to understand what kind of quality of service requirements are or challenges uh, were present, um, uh, or we uh, which um, quality of service challenges we encountered uh, while um, using 60 stack for this uh, avionic use case. I will use the following picture. So the first problem um, occurred already in the simplest um, communication pattern from a source node um, to sync uh, in the uplink. You can see the two links um, with the cell location specified uh, in the square brackets. Uh, the first 
uh, value is the slot offset. Uh, second one is the channel offset. Um, well, while this, this does not look like a like problematic scenario, um, the arrangement uh, of these uh, trans of these cells, so A to B and B to sync, um, is pretty unfavorable in the sense that uh, a node being transmitted from A would have to wait all of this um, uh, extra time slots highlighted in red uh, before finally reaching the sync. So there is some potential, or there was some potential to optimize um, these or these multi-hop paths. And also, if on the other hand, if we consider uh, downlink communication, where a single packet has to be transmitted to multiple destinations, um, normally uh, there is only one cell between every pair of nodes. So uh, the and the number of these cells is adapted pretty slowly, uh, which leads to congestions on some links where we have to uh, forward a lot of the traffic. In order to solve the issues, um, and one of the like prominent features of the Sixtish protocol stack is that um, one could um, leverage cross-layer communication between uh, routing layer and uh, this uh, scheduling part and exchange um, data such as some topological information, uh, scheduling events uh, to um, improve this the, the schedule uh, and meet stricter quality of service requirements. For example, the scheduling functions can then also, or a custom scheduling function can also schedule, well, uh, any kind of uh, cell or uh, add some extra prioritization to uh, improve the performance for the selected uh, applications. And um, as an example, what um, was achieved by applying all of these uh, cross-layer communication concepts, um, you don't have to pay too much attention to, to the abbreviations here. Uh, what I want to show is that each of the bars on the left-hand side before this um, dashed line represents a particular um, optimization which um, was developed uh, using this cross-layer communication. And um, combined, um, they allowed to reduce the end-to-end -end delay of the critical application, in this case, a uh, smoke alarm, uh, to a level um, beyond, or sorry, uh, below one second, uh, which was the target. Uh, and it came at the cost of also reducing the slot frame size a bit uh, from uh, 101 uh, time slots from the purple bar to um, 43 time slots, uh, which also increases the duty cycle. But um, this is uh, kind of an acceptable uh, trade-off. Now, to the more like relevant part for, uh, for this um, uh, conference, uh, the, the implementation. So um, this is a like overall or rough abstract uh, picture of the implementation. And um, I know there are a lot of blocks here which are uh, absolutely not readable um, on a single slide. So I will also have them in a bit more uh, detail on the following slides uh, where, I, where I will talk about the particular uh, parts or explain them uh, in more detail. But the, the purpose of this particular picture is to show that um, we try to follow this uh, modular structure in terms of having a lot of uh, modules uh, to with like um, delegated uh, responsibilities or functions and um, it, allow these modules to be replaced or extended uh, to enable uh, better uh, prototyping of uh, some uh, yeah, custom uh, solutions. And in particular, this um, interface for the scheduling functions is um, pretty uh, important in the sense that there is no scheduling function uh, defined by default, uh, but uh, the minimal scheduling function which is implemented uh, is an example of how uh, one could approach uh, this uh, yeah, scheduling uh, problem in the sixth dish. So uh, in a bit more detail, RPL um, is a pretty, so this routing protocol is pretty simple, it has a pretty simple structure in the sense that uh, there are just three modules which are responsible for um, joining or leaving uh, this topology, um, root discovery via some special control messages, a detection of uh, loops, uh, routing loops and their repair, as well as maintaining uh, version control of the whole topology, uh, which is performed by the sync node. And the core RPL module is responsible for all of these tasks, while uh, the trickle timer just ensures that we do not broadcast too many control messages into the network, into the network and is kind of an assistive uh, module in this case, while the objective function um, defines a criteria about 
how to select um, the best uh, preferred parent from the from the candidate ones so like uh, from the neighborhood basically and you can imagine we can use um, uh, different metrics such as uh, link quality hop count in the simplest case uh, to make su such a decision uh, the tish implementation um, comes necessarily not only with the next layer um, which is uh, largely based on 15.4 implementation from inet but also this uh, six top sub layer which is responsible for uh, managing the uh, negotiations um, between neighbors in terms of which cells to schedule or deschedule basically and um, how to handle all of the um, exception cases for example uh, some inconsistencies or uh, lost packets because there is really a lot of uh, state maintenance there and um, what you can also see is there are some uh, also assistive uh, classes such as the slot frame or link that are just um, containers to better uh, control and visualize uh, or organize uh, different parts of, of this uh, whole uh, like uh, scheduled uh, Mac, which is uh, Tish. Now coming to uh, more entertaining part, uh, the demos. Um, so the very first demo is um, they are not uh, recorded, so these are like <laughs> manual animations to some extent, but um, uh, I think uh, this allows me to uh, show a bit uh, better uh, particular parts particular parts uh, of the process and explain it so that you understand uh, what, is being actually, what is actually being shown here and where um, to focus your attention on. Um, the very first part, what happens in the network is uh, the bootstrapping, so uh, the sync node starts to build uh, the topology by broadcasting or rather flooding control messages and uh, this happens uh, well gradually because um, in this randomly generated topology the transmission ranges are set or transmission power is set to a pretty uh, small value so that um, we can have a really uh, like deep uh, multi-hop uh, tree and while the dissemination of these control messages occurs you can also see some numbers popping up on top of a, uh, on top of nodes which are the location of the dedicated cell uh, which a node schedules with its preferred parent because uh, the minimal scaling function defines that once you have joined uh, this door deck also the tree you need to have like a communication link with your parent uh, so while the broadcast broadcast messages are being broadcasted or being forwarded in the minimal cell uh, nodes um, which have already joined the tree are also ensuring this uh, minimal connectivity step by step until uh, all of the nodes that were in the range uh, unfortunately for this node uh, 10 and 12 have joined uh, the uh, door deck further on we uh, once the topology is created um, we kind of expect some application applications to be running on the nodes and uh, for this particular example um, the each node generates uh, one packet per slot frame which roughly equals one packet per second and um, as we can see with time uh, the minimal scaling function also detects uh, this increased amount of traffic and uh, it tries to uh, adapt the link layer resources that is the number of cells uh, to handle uh, this uh, traffic load which is especially important for uh, hosts which are the forward forwarding nodes for the whole subtree so as the time goes by we schedule more cells and uh, now to, to avoid this highly congested um, view uh, i switch to the to representation of number of cells rather than their particular locations so uh, as you can see the number of cells increases until finally it reaches the um, sort of like hysteresis condition where uh, the cell utilization does not uh, exceed certain thresholds and uh, no more cells will be added or deleted unless uh, there is change in traffic. The final example is um, uh, pretty simple and is related to uh, handling cases where uh, there is uh, some intra-network um, collisions where two cells um, of uh, independent nodes but neighboring nodes have been scheduled at the exact same location uh, which cause uh, of course uh, packet loss uh, at every transmission and uh, MSF also keeps track of this um, performance of each cell in terms of the uh, packet delivery ratio and is able to relocate 
uh, the cell by also using this uh, six top sub layer to issue corresponding request uh, to the parent. So after relocating both cells, um, the interference is gone and we can receive all of the packets uh, at the sync node again. Um, as the um, conclusion to um, after all of these demos and implementation details, um, I can say that uh, we have um, or we provide um, this uh, six dish uh, stack uh, with extra uh, msf implementation um, as uh, open source available uh, on github in the links um, in the references and uh, the example with cross layer communication uh, has been provided here to, to motivate um, its like adoption or extension uh, if you need to meet specific quality of service uh, requirements uh, it is relatively extensible in the sense that, uh, as I showed you, there are a lot of uh, um, fi fi fine-grained uh, or small modules which can be replaced or extended without affecting the uh, more complicated uh, parts uh, of the framework. Uh, however, some of the features are still missing, in particular uh, integration with um, INET's uh, ICMP um v6 layer uh, as well as uh, implementation of particular layers of this uh, six dish protocol stack um, and also a migration to uh, most up-to-date uh, omnet and inet versions would be nice um, as well as um, some testing uh, because um, as you can imagine in a distributed environment uh, where a lot of nodes are negotiating uh, these cells in parallel uh, there are especially with lossy medium, there are a lot of conditions uh, what, where, when uh, can fail. So uh, testing would be necessary, necessary to avoid a headache uh, while, uh, you know, for example, migrating between different uh, INET versions. Thank you very much for your attention. And um, yeah, uh, please uh, ask questions um, if you have them. And here are the, uh, also the reference links I promised. I have a question, um, if I may. So um, you mentioned that you're working with the IPv6 part of the INET framework. Um, yeah. I was wondering if you run into any problems with that, or did you have to like you know, fix things, or uh, are there things missing that you would rather have in there? Because I know that that's a part that could be improved uh, as as much as I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, so, because um, this yeah, 60 stack, as the name implies, is particularly um, bound to IPv6. And um, what I didn't realize initially is that uh, the uh, so I was trying to have this uh, RPL interact with uh, existing um, models, for example, also for IP, for uh, maintaining the routing, ta routing tables, and so on. And but uh, turned out that. Uh, some parts uh, of IPv6 um, protocol, uh, especially it's uh, like neighbor discovery, uh, stuff like that, uh, they are not really compatible with the wireless operation. And there is there exists a separate standard for wireless uh, neighbor discovery, which uh, of course is not uh, implemented yet uh, in INET, um, but would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm sure the developers are listening. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that's something that sometimes we talk about that the IPv6 part might might need a little revamp. Mm. Right, uh, Andras, are you here? Can you uh, press the red button on recording?